so my name is Antonio Bianchi, and I'm going to present our work on uh, Android security we develop at University of California, Santa Barbara. So we all use both uh, internet browsers so, and a mobile application to interact with online services. And, and on, the, on the left, you can see how the PayPal login page appears on a, on a browser, and on the right, how it appears in, a, in the mobile application in Android. Uh, the two interfaces are pretty similar, however, there is a fundamental difference. That is that in the browser, we have a trusted indicator that is the URL bar that is showing us the origin of the content we are interacting with. Unfortunately, we don't have the same indicator in a mobile application. So we investigated this problem, and we found that not only we don't have origin indication in mobile applications, but also the graphical separations between different applications is not that strong as, for instance, between different tabs in a, in a browser. And in addition, the separation between apps is not complete. And for instance, an application can know the application a user is actually is currently interacting with. So the combination of these three aspects allows an attacker to easily perform attacks like phishing attacks, as I'm going to show you in this video. So in this video, user simply open Facebook, this is the legitimate Facebook login page. And uh, so now we are going to open a malicious application. So, OK. So this is the malicious application. So now uh, the malicious application is running in background now. And uh, now the user is trying to open Facebook again. But uh, what, what you see are. It appears exactly as the original Facebook login page, but it is not. It is a window spawned by the malicious application because the malicious application detected that the user was trying to open the legitimate Facebook application and cover it with a uh, malicious uh, window, uh, malicious Facebook login page. So, in our paper, we systematically study the different techniques that allows these kind of attacks and that we generically call them GUI confusion attacks. And then we develop two defenses. So the first one is market level, and it's based on static analysis. And the second one is based on UI modifications, and so we think it can be applied on any device. And to evaluate this second defense, we perform a user study. So there are different techniques an, a, a, an attacker can use to exploit the missing, the missing graphical separations. And in the paper, of course, you can find all the details. And some of these techniques are, were already known. Some of them, instead, are novel. And uh, we have categorized them in three uh, big categories. So first of all, an application can simply draw content on top of other apps, as we can see in this image, in which the small uh, circular uh, window is actually a window from the Facebook Messenger app on top of the PayPal login window. So then an app can also just switch the application, the, the window the user is interacting with, as we have seen in the, in the video, in which in the moment in which the user was starting interacting with the, with the original Facebook page, the user interaction was switched to the malicious windows, uh, to the malicious Facebook login page. And also application can, can go, can spawn full screen windows that, and these allow even more powerful attacks since they can also cover areas that are usually just used by system components, such as the navigation bar or the, or the status bar. So given the complexity of the Android API managing these aspects, we also develop a, automatic, a tool to automatically, uh, to aut automatically exercise the API managing these aspects. And in particular, we exercise some specific APIs, and we try them with all the possible parameters. And one interesting finding we had in this is that in theory, a full screen windows, there should be always, there should be always be a, an easy way to close it and to switch to another app. However, we found combination of flags that allows an attacker to create a full screen window that not only is controlling completely the device uh, screen, but also doing so in a way that it's impossible for a user to, to escape from this. So there is a, another, another uh, aspect that an attacker needs to consider to perform an efficient attack is to get information about user interaction with other apps. In fact, uh, in the video, we have seen that the attack was effective because the malicious window was open exactly when the user was, was expecting to interact with the legitimate one. So to, to achieve this goal, an attacker needs to know 
what is the intended uh, inter uh, the intended window the which is the window of the user wants to actually interact with so there are different ways and up to android 4.4 there was an api just that you can just use to get this information and now uh, this, uh, the behavior of this api changes but still it's possible to use some side channel side channels and in particular uh, reading the statm file in the proc file system as has been explained in detail in a paper published at usenix uh, last year so so how can we defend from these uh, from these attacks uh, we developed first a, a a solution based on static based on static analysis so that we envision that this solution could be used for instance uh, uh, during the vetting process at market level of the submitted applications so our our solution is designed to detect the conditions that are necessary for an application to perform this kind of attacks in particular we we check uh, if these two features are present in an app so we check if an app is trying to detect which app is the user is interacting with and also if an app is using a technique to jump or draw some content on top of other apps. To, to detect these two features, we use code slicing, and of course you can find the details in the paper, and we check if specific APIs are called with specific parameters. We also check if um, the code location where the first two features are detected are connected in the, in the control flow graph, and to do so we, we do uh, simply control flow analysis. So, this is an example of a sample our tool was able to detect, and this sample is pretty interesting because it's waiting for the user to open the official Google Play Store app, but then it's showing on top of it a malicious windows asking for credit card information. But what is interesting is that this windows actually is mimicking the legitimate window that the Google Play Store uh, opens when, for instance, a user wants to buy uh, not, free, not, uh, not free content. So we also run our tool on larger data sets of applications, and we were able to find interesting samples in both uh, a, a set of malicious apps and a set of benign apps. And we found, in fact, uh, a lot of samples that heavily interferes with Android user interface. And also we found a particularly interesting category for applications that, that are legitimate, but they perform really similar to an attacker. Because these applications are uh, called uh, app lockers, are designed to basically prevent the user to interact with specific apps. And they do so by checking which is the app a user wants to interact and covering it with a window unless an unlock password is inserted. So from these results, we can see that uh, our tool is able to detect applications that heavily interferes with the Android user interface. But to actually understand exactly if this interference is benign or malicious, we need to understand the semantic of an app. We need to understand if the goal the app is trying to achieve is really uh, benign or, or malicious. So we could rely on manual analysis, but we also decide to, uh, uh, to uh, design a different solution to this problem that is based on modification on the Android user interface. So the idea is the underlying root cause of this problem is that the user has no way to understand which is the app is currently interacting with. And as no way, in other words, as he has no way to understand the, the origin of the content he is interacting with. So to solve this issue, we design a, a security indicator that, that you can see on the bottom of this slide that is basically showing the, the origin of the window a user is interacting with. And we design it to be similar to how a modern browser is showing information about the origin of a, of a page a user is interacting. So uh, the first problem we had to solve in designing this uh, security indicator was to choose uh, which kind of information about the origin of an app we want to provide to the user. So we could have, uh, we could have shown to the user the, the icon of an app or the name or the developer name from the market. However, this information is not really reliable. For instance, in this image, I'm showing you what, what appears if you look for the popular 2048 game in the Google Play Store. And you can see that different apps try to mimic the name and the graphical appearance of others. And in particular, the one, uh, the, uh, let's say, from the original, uh, from, from the original inventor is listed in, in fifth position. But the name is not giving really us this kind of information. So we decide to, to rely, to, to take a different solution. So to rely on an existing SSL-AV uh, extended validation infrastructure. 
And more precisely, we decide to show the organization name acquired from a SSL AV certificate that a developer that wants to use our system for, for his own app needs to, to get. And uh, another in, in interesting problem we had to solve in, other, in, other, in, other, in the design of our security indicator was how to show information uh, in a reliable way. So we decide to use the navigation bar since it is usually always shown to the user, but there are full skill applications. So full skill application could potentially cover the navigation bar and show a spoofed security indicator. So to solve this issue, we simply decide to rely on a, on a secure, secret image that is an image uh, chosen by the user on, uh, when it is, is first using the device. And this secret image in this slide is the small word icon on the bottom. And so in this way, uh, even if an application, a malicious application goes full screen, it cannot spoof correctly the secret image because it simply doesn't know, uh, it doesn't know the image chosen by the user. So in this video, I'm going to show you how the attack we have seen before appears with our defense in place. So now the official windows uh, from the official window from Facebook is open, but the user can understand this by looking at the, at the security indicator that is showing the company behind this window. Then we open the, the attack application again. Here we are. OK. So the attack application now is going to background. The user tries again to interact with Facebook. The malicious application is covering Facebook again, but now the user can at least understand that this window is not from Facebook anymore because not by noticing the, the absence of any security indicator on this window. So we, we wanted to evaluate our system. So we perform a user study using 300, uh, with 308 uh, subjects from Mechanical Torque, and we divided them in three, in three groups. So subjects from the first group were just interacting with standard Android. Subjects from the second group, we, we were, they were interacting with the system which our uh, defense was in place, and then we had group three in which uh, subjects uh, that, that was basically as group two, but in addition we were giving, we were providing some additional information to the user, to the subjects about the functionality of the security indicator. So to evaluate uh, subjects, we asked them to interact with Facebook four times, and and after each interaction, interaction we asked if the, if we asked if they if they were thinking that they, they were interacting with the original Facebook app or not. And actually, after, uh, during two of these interactions, uh, we performed an attack. So in one case, we performed the attack exactly as we have seen in the video, that is, malicious app just cover the original uh, Facebook login window. And in the other case, we simulate the case in which an app is also trying to spoof the security indicator, but of course it fails in showing a proper uh, secret image. And in this table, we have uh, the results. So, uh, so what is important to see is that uh, in, uh, in group one with standard Android, only 2% of users were able to actually uh, classify correctly all the four interactions, probably just by random luck. And instead, in, uh, in group two, uh, more than half of the subjects were able to actually detect uh, when they were under attack. So another interesting result is that uh, the attack in which we were showing a Spoof, we were trying to spoof the security indicator but showing an incorrect uh, secret image. In this, uh, this attack was easier to be detected than the, other, the one in which we were not showing any security indicator. And this is probably because of the fact that an uh, unexpected secret image is, more, is raising more wa warning in, a, in, a, in, the, in the subject than just the absence of any security indication. And we can also see that group three performed only slightly better than group two and this may be because uh, group, maybe group three, the, the explanation we gave was not uh, good enough or simply because group two were already informed uh, enough. So to conclude, in our paper, we study uh, the problem of GUI confusion attacks in Android, and we propose two solutions, one, based on market, one that can be applied at a market level based on static analysis, and, then one, and another that can be applied on every de device based on modification on the UI, and we evaluated it with a user study. And you can find the source code uh, of the, our on-device defense on GitHub. So and with this, uh, I'm ready to answer two questions. Hi, uh, 
Simpson Garfinkel on this. There's been um, a lot of research on the desktop that users ignore security indicators. And so I was wondering why you thought that they were not ignoring your security indicator. Is it because they were in an artificial study and they might grow used to it over time or something else? So, uh, so there is a lot of research on desktop and also, of course, on, on browsers about security indicators. And uh, it's true that a lot of papers uh, say that security indicators on browsers are not really effective, but there are also papers, for instance, there is uh, Alice in, Warn in Warning Land, that is a recent paper that is showing how uh, a proper security indicator is actually effective. So for this reason, we try to simulate how uh, modern browsers uh, show security indication. And, and you can also find the comparison between a modern browser and our defense. Uh, you can find it exactly in, in the paper, uh, exactly how we are kind of similar. And so, what prevents the malware from reading the security indicator? So we, we save uh, the secret image in a, in, a, in a folder that is not accessible to... And they can't screenshot the screen? So screenshots in Android are always me mediated by the operating system. So we, and, and, and in any case, they require user input. But we, we change the, the API provided by the operating system so that that region is not uh, okay. screenshot. So I wonder how applicable the attacks you've described and the methodology you've ex uh, described is to other mobile operating systems like iOS and uh, uh, Windows Mobile? We didn't look specifically into it, but uh, I think as far as you have a way to jump on top of another app and you have a way to understand what the user is doing, either by normal API or by some side channel, I, I think this, this is applicable. And also, the, f the, fact, the, the fact that an app can jump on top of another app may be considered as a bad thing of the API, but it may also be necessary. For instance, if you have an alarm app, so you want it to, to be able to jump on top. So uh, it might, I, I, I didn't look specifically into other operating systems, but as far as you have these two things, I think it's applicable. Yeah, I just wondered because I think those systems don't seem to suffer from these problems, and so maybe a moral of the story is that this is a bad operating system design choice rather than a good operating system design choice. Uh, it, it would be interesting to revisit some of these things and see whether the user experience on those devices is similar or not. Um, in terms of the user study you did, uh, what was the time period the study was over? You said you had a couple of rounds where you asked them to do yeah, the user so study. The, the, so we had four interactions. So more, uh, in average, every user was interacting for about 15 minutes. Yeah. Considering also the initial question, so yes, and they were interacting think. through a browser. Uh, so it was a browser connected through VNC to a to oh, a really emulator. To go back and do a sort of a two-week study and see yes, whether that, that, that's they definitely then see uh, the, an interesting thing. I guess the last observation was there was a lot of research in the 1990s into compartmented mode workstations, which looked at how do you label windows in terms of security. And I think yeah. the user study methodology at that point was not the kind of thing that we do now, but it would be interesting to see whether there are other techniques from that environment, such as the use of trusted paths, which of course do exist in iOS, but I guess don't exist in many Android devices. So, thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Hello, a uh, question from our College of William Mary. So a follow up question on that uh, secure display question. So, so I assume your security, uh, security indicator will be uh, changing, not just static, right? So do you use that just one picture for the security indicator or you will change it every time the user log in to open this app. So if so, you use a static one, the attacker, if they know this one, they can easily prove just a, uh, steal this image. So if you change this every time, for the, uh, then you will need the user, depend on the user, to recognize which uh, this security indicator are valid indicator, or which are just maybe just faked by the malicious app. So, so are, are you speaking about the, the secret image? Or? Yeah, security indicator. So in our, de in our design, the secret image is chosen by the user, and the user is free to change, to change it if he wants, but it's generally always the, the same unless it changes. But in any case, the attacker cannot easily uh, guess it because it's, uh, it cannot, uh, it, so it's saved in a private location, and it cannot screenshot it. So uh, I don't know how an attacker could actually uh, guess the secret image. Okay, thanks. Okay. 
Uh, hello, I had a, a quick additional question about the user study. I'm curious how many rounds the participants saw. So how many different um, interfaces and whether or not the indicator was present and absent, like for what percentage of the time so, for the subject? So in our user study, we did uh, four interactions. And in, in two of them, uh, the user was not attacked, and in two of them, the user was attacked. And we randomize uh, this order. And so, okay. so and, and as I said, in total, the interaction was around 50 minutes. Okay, so the total not, experiment. You're not too concerned. You, so you, you weren't really testing habituation at all in these subjects. So the, 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 the habituation. What? So you're not no. looking at whether or not the subjects, if they saw this 20 times, would then start forgetting about the indicator, which is one of the primary concerns. We no, we, we, we did not, but that's definitely the one of the most interesting ne next uh, future works. All right, thank you. Okay, we'll, we'll have to make this the last question. You just ask it and then that, this will be Quick up. question. So the, uh, what are the implications for the OS? Do, we, do you need to roll, to roll the phone to do this or, is, or not? Yes, uh, in, uh, in the sense that, yeah, the, the, these are modification of the Android operating system, so, so you, you they either need to be implemented in the uh, standalone Android or, or you need to root your phone. To, to flash on your phone a modified Android version. So you're about to convince Google to do that? So, sorry? So you're about to convince Google to do it? Yes. I don't know, maybe. Okay. Good. <laughs> but you can find the source code if you want to, to look at it in here. All right, let, let's thank the speaker.